Beaver is one of our favorite meats. It's a dark red meat. It's really tender. Even on bigger beavers, it's very tender. So we take meat from every beaver and we skin beavers in a slightly different way in order to make sure that the meat is not contaminated, uh, doesn't get anything on it. It's really easy to do and it, you don't have to change much on how you skin a beaver. Um, so we're going to walk through the whole process start to finish from the beaver laying here uh, to you know getting that hide off so you can pull the meat out. So the first thing and probably the biggest thing is just thinking of this as you know we don't want our meat to come in contact with anything that's touched this hide. Think of this hide as being radioactive and you know it there are things that this hide has on it that have interacted with, with the outdoor environment that we don't want to get onto our meat. So the first thing we're going to do is decontaminate our station. And that's really a pretty, it's, it's simple. And I mean, you don't have to go crazy because you're going to do some trimming on the meat anyway, but I just use some cleaning wipes, give a quick wipe. If you don't have a surface that can be wiped down like this, I mean, you can put down parchment paper, you can just, you don't want when you're handling that animal to roll it over and have that meat slide across something that's, you know, just real nasty. My skin and table is usually pretty, uh, pretty gross. So then I'm just doing the same thing with my blades. Uh, you know, the ones that are going to come in contact with that meat. You don't have to go too, too crazy. Like I said, you're going to do some trimming, but just be conscious of it at the, at the base root of it. So there are two places that you can get essentially that you don't want to interact with when you're skinning. First, here I'm going to get some gloves on. First, like I said, is the hide and that's just because they're touching, they're interacting with stuff in that outside environment that you don't want to eat. And the second is any piece of their GI tract. So what's that mean? That is anything from their intestines. This is a beaver's cloaca. This is the most dangerous part of the animal when it comes to pulling meat. We want everything to stay away from that. Why is that? Everyone's heard of beaver, beaver fever, giardia. Giardia lives in the intestines of the beaver and it's shed through the feces. And so as long as you don't interact with the inside, so while you're skinning it, you don't puncture into the, the gut cavity. And as long as you stay away from that and you know, don't go rubbing that and then rub your hand down the back straps. Just avoid that at all costs. So we're going to start and we're going to go through this start to finish. First thing we do is we take off the tail. So I'm going to use my blade. I go just maybe an inch above where the, the tail attaches to the body. I'm going to cut in. Flip it up. Put it across the back. It's okay to leave a little bit of fur on there. You know, you don't want to be going too, too far up. And then just a good twist. This was a fresh caught beaver. This is a beaver from today. We'll put this off to the side. We, we use our tails for other things. So tails off. I like to get a piece of fur here because it might have some dripping blood. Go to my front feet. I'm going to cut around them. Make sure all that skin is separated because when it comes time to pull those front legs through, you want that to all be separated. From there, we're going to move to our, our back legs and this is where we do things a little bit different. Um, a lot of people will cut the whole leg off or the whole foot off, you can do that. We like to keep our legs on because we use the carcasses for baits for other animals. And so it's just really handy to have something, you know, to grab onto. So we're gonna leave that foot on and pull it through after. So I go around one side, over here to the other side, and I'm just cutting the fur above the foot. And I'm not going down, and you see I'm not, cutting straight down it doesn't really matter but i don't like to cut that achilles heel again that's because we we use this foot to you know carry carcasses and it's just i found it's easy enough 
to keep on. And when you're handling the carcass afterwards, the benefits are, are there. So, okay, I cut around those, but now is probably the most important thing that we do for pulling that through. I'm going to come in and actually put my blade inside and cut the, the, the flesh or the fat, I guess, around that leg. And that's going to help me pull it through after. So do it on that side, do it on this side. And I'm kind of running my blade along the inside. You know, there's upward pressure. I'm not pointing up, but there's upward pressure against that hide so that I'm not cutting down to the meat again because we're thinking about meat here. And from the other side, I find where I was. Come in, kind of hold that up, get around the Achilles heel, come down. And that's just freeing up this space in here, which you'll see in a minute. And we're just doing some prep to make our lives easier. All right, so we got those freed up. Now we're gonna move to our center line cut. Beavers, we, we open skin. So we're gonna cut it up the belly. We're gonna come up, go around the cloaca and follow this line. We're gonna stop underneath the chin right here because we want that area intact when it comes time to flesh later. So again, remember, we're, this is that time frame where we just want to be careful. So you see I'm kind of keeping my fingers away from the cloaca. I pull the hide up. I put the knife in. I press out. I'm actually going to switch knives here. A bit sharper one. We're going to try to do this in a way that you can see it. Okay, so now we've gone around our cloaca. We're gonna go straight up the belly. So here, I'm lifting the hide up because you don't wanna cut into the stomach. There's a very thin, thin membrane that's separating the stomach from the hide. And again, that stomach is what we wanna stay away from. So I am going, pull the hide up, going just underneath the hide, putting my finger on the other side, pushing my knife above that finger. Okay, so front legs are cut, back legs are cut. This area is open. Now before I pick up my beaver knife, this is a beaver skinning knife, I'm gonna use my sharp knife down around the cloaca to just get a head start because this, it just, it's kinda, the skin is loose here. And so when you try to use that beaver knife, it can be difficult to get a start. Trying to do things backwards here. Okay, so what we're also doing here is we're exposing our caster and our oil. These are also big no-nos. You want to stay away from that. It's all associated with that cloaca. So a cloaca is a single hole that that beaver does everything through. It urinates, it defecates, it breeds, it gives birth, it you know secretes oil, cat, everything comes out of that one hole. While you're skinning, you want to avoid these because this is where you'll hear people say, oh, I had beaver and it was so nasty. It tasted like that smell, you know, that caster. That's because someone nicked this. So while you're doing the whole process, we're going to harvest these. These are very, very valuable, but we're going to do that last. It's the absolute last thing that we touch on this animal. So we've opened that up a little bit. Let's switch sides again. Crack the window because the first shit's almost getting warm. 85 degrees. Okay, so now we're moving on to our beaver knife. This is 
I, I think it's just called a beaver skinning knife. It's a specific type of knife for beavers. And it's to help with this rounded, their round body. So I'm just going to start, you know, I'm pulling that hide back and I'm cutting the connective tissue between the hide and the belly. Again, this right here is the belly that you want to, you don't want to cut down into that membrane. When we're just taking an animal for fur, we're just taking the fur and not the meat, it's not as big of a deal. You don't have to worry too much. But we are really trying to keep this meat from being contaminated. Right there, we see that's the the back side of the nipple. So that, that means that this is likely a female. Well, this is a female at that point. Males, while they have nipples, you know, they don't breastfeed. So that's from actually, that's the mammary gland that actually produced milk this past year. So on a male, that, that would just be creamy white. You wouldn't see any difference. So this is where that hole that we made originally starts to show. And I'm just going to go around that, come over here, going around, you know, that animal's body kind of goes like this, so going around there. I also like to keep a paper towel handy just for cleaning things up. So now that we've got that mostly scun around in that hole from the, when we started, I'm going to reach in, grab that leg and pop it out. Now I'm going to roll that animal. I'm going to start skinning back around the ribs. There's a couple points here. So the most, the, the biggest difference that we do when we skin a beaver for meat versus, you know, just for fur is that we hang them. So usually you only hang case skun animals and uh, beavers just get, you know, they get round skun on a table like this. They get flopped around. We hang them. And so in order to make that process easier, there's a couple little trigger points that we want to get around. One being the hip and the other's the corner of the belly. So right here, as I pull this back, you know, on the ribs, I pull back, I can see that, that connective tissue easy to cut. I pull back on this corner between that back leg and the rib. And you can see that right there is the stomach uh, lining or the, or the, you know, the, the meat associated with the stomach. So I'm just gonna go real slow and easy here. Pull back, you don't wanna cut this cause you cut that, you expose the intestines and that's when you, know, you can you just start worrying about getting into the place that has Giardia. Now I'm past that, I'm good, I'm in the clear. Next little trigger point is this back hip. You can see I'm getting into the meat a little bit, that's okay. Cause that's gonna get trimmed once we remove that meat anyway. So it's okay if you have a little bit of meat here on the hide, trying to limit it as much as possible, but this right here, it gets thin. So we just want to get beyond that before we get that animal hanging out. And this right here is also why we keep our, we try to keep our knives clean, you know, hit them with some disinfectant first, because I'm obviously running it over the, the meat. So now we're going to flip it. Now we're doing the other side. Again, we're starting to see that opening. So we're just gonna expose a little bit more of that leg, come down here, and then pop that leg through. Of course, from this angle, it's a little difficult. Now here's one of those little tips and tricks moments. I'm gonna roll this to get underneath, to get back here, just like we did in the last one. But I don't want my hide to be like this and I roll it and all this good meat goes sliding across my skinning table. So roll that up and position it so that that meat is touching your hide. 
Also, sometimes you're moving these animals around. If it's an animal that has a lot of caster, a lot of liquid in its caster, it'll leak out of the cloaca. You got to watch that. That's probably one of the more important things that can taint meat is right here in this moment, you've got that beaver rolled over. You're focusing on skinning and there's cloaca juice that's running down over your, over your, your leg meat there. So just try, try and be cautious of it. Try and watch for it. Come up to the ribs again. Here's that, that stomach line or again, it's not a lining. It's membrane. Membrane. I know there's a better term for it. <laughs> Getting around that hip. Now that I've got those things trigged up, I want to get this animal before I get into the real heart and soul of the meat that I want to eat. I want to get this animal hung up. Again, this is this is the really big difference between kind of traditional beaver skinning where you're using a, a skinning trough where that animal's rolled around um, and us being as equally, you know, we're, we're very, very concerned about the hide and removing the hide in a good way, but we're equally concerned with getting that meat because this is a, it's an important part of our annual, annual food source. Get this underneath it. Keep a bucket. So, you know, it's, it's, it's worth noting when you do this, they drip more. There's going to be blood. Um, it's just the nature of it. And so we put a bucket underneath to catch that and try to keep the floor, floor kind of clean. This part right in here is very thin. I mean, there's almost nothing between the hide and your meat. So you want to be careful. And you can see I removed some, some meat here. That's all right. This will get trimmed up. You know, this is actually a cap on your sirloin. So that's something that you would either use in grind or, and again, we're going to show you how we take meat. There's a bunch of different ways to utilize a beaver, just like anything. There's a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different ways to utilize a deer or a bear or any other game species. But this is how we do it. So, and we... For the record, we take back straps, sirloins as steaks, we package them as steaks, and then we take the back legs, we freeze them whole so they can be used easily in roasts. Um, or you can, you know, thaw them out and then use them for, for well, anything, you know, stew meat and stuff. So I've got it down to the shoulders. Now I'm coming into that, that area that I left uncut. And again, I leave that uncut so that when I'm fleshing, I have something on my board to hold it up on. I've, I've found it to be very beneficial. So we're coming down into the, into the throat area in the legs. So you can start to see that leg pop out. This is one of the, this is a difficult transition because <clears throat> it looks like this is where you want to be going. But the reality is you want to be following that arm across. And just go slow. Your beavers have a thick hide. <clears throat> so you can get away with, you know, pushing your blade. I'm not saying don't go cutting your hide. But if you just go slow and apply, you know, slow pressure, you'll see these other things start to fall away. Now, at this point, <clears throat> I'm going to switch over to a sharper knife. I'm kind of done with the beaver knife is really used for those round areas. And I'm going underneath <clears throat> that leg until I see a hole. I'm starting to pull that leg out. And this is where that initial cut that we made helps. As you see that start to show, that's your <clears throat> initial cut. You can just pop it out. And I'll go on the other side. Same thing, you know, so we start to see that elbow show up here. It kind of looks like we want to go that way, but we don't. We want to come across. And remove that hide up into the arm.
coming through. So we break that out. And that pops right out. So now we're going to move down behind. And you see it's starting to bleed a little bit. I'm going to watch that. I just don't want it running all the way down my hide. But now we're coming down the neck. And this can be a tricky spot because it's so thin The uh, between the, you know, the, the hide and the meat. Now, we don't take meat for ourselves from down here, so I don't mind leaving a little bit more on the hide to guarantee my hide's good. Come down to the cheeks, see those jowls? That's your cheek. So, I'm going to get it. Now, right here, that V, if I were just to cut straight across here, I'd cut my hide. So, you want to kind of just watch that and go above it. Now, we're at a point. I'll get a little bit more here. I'm pulling the hide of my fingers. I'm underneath going like this to create that separation. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to a knife that is sharp but cheap. So I run, I just run this right in you. Sorry. <clears throat> Sharpening every time I get to this point, it's a knife I don't care about. It's a you know two dollar pairing knife. It's got a thin blade. You can get crazy sharp. I'm also going to get a paper towel preemptively because this is where you start seeing your blood. And I'm just going to kind of clean that up a little bit and keep that on hand. So the whole idea is that you need a sharp knife here, but you're gonna end up running it into bone. So I don't like my, I don't like to use my real nice knives on this part. So right here, I'm getting to an ear, cut straight through that ear. So we'll show you a little bit better on this side. So as we're coming along, you can see it kind of gets hung up there. That's your ear straight across, cut that out. This is another place that as you're coming down across along the forehead, it can be easy to cut. So you just kind of. Take your time, sharp knife, patience. You know, I'm cutting more into the into the the meat than I am anything else. Again, they just they're gonna bleed a bit. Coming back to the we'll get some of that cheek and lower face out. And I'm going to come back and focus on my eyes. Now, at this point in the market, the fur market, you never really know where a beaver's going to end up. So we really like to take our time on the face and try to get really, really nice faces. Because we might end up selling this as a wall hanger, as some kind of decor where you want that feature to be really nice. You know, in the traditional fur market... Or the eyes and the face, I mean, a lot of times they just get cut right off. But here we're going to, so I'm starting to see an eye poke out. I'm hugging the skull. I'm really running my knife into the bone. There's that next one that starts to pop out. Now there's a little, always bleeds around the eye, but there's a little kind of point that gets hung up right behind the eye. So I like to go in and right when I get here, turn my knife in just a bit. And go back to skinning and now we are just got to come down past the whiskers once we get down on the face we go straight across and cut the nose off and that that right there is how you produce a hide that is good for the market it's good for the market with an animal who you can harvest the meat from. So that is no nicks, no nothing. It's a beautiful, beautiful hide. Because I've handled this so much, I'm going to change my gloves out and change my utensils and get things set up differently.
in preparation to remove the actual meat from this animal.